girl Samantha Speaks and welcome back to my channel, my channel, my channel. Listen, a lot of you guys know me as Samantha Speaks, but right now you're going to know me as Samantha the Survivor. Samantha the, the girl who thought she couldn't and she did. I want to get on here and I want to talk about this COVID. A lot of people that think that the COVID is over, it's so far from it. I need to get on here and let people be aware. There's a new strain out and this strain is killing people so quickly, you don't even have time to react. So I'm just jumping into this video and we're getting into it. I'm 34 years old. I had COVID in January. It was nothing like this you can ever imagine going through in your life. It's all, everything happened so fast and slow at the same time, what I'm about to say. So, as you see, I am on oxygen. We're gonna get into that in just a minute. Like I said, I'm only 34 years old. I just celebrated my birthday on June 18th. Everything was normal. Everything I thought my whole life I was happy. I was, I was focused. I was riveting. And then everything just took a turn. So as you guys know, I work from home. It doesn't save you. I work from home, but unfortunately people travel and they bring what is out there still lurking, especially the new stuff back. This new COVID called the Delta is what I'm suffering from, is what I'm recovering from, as I should say. I don't wanna say suffer. I was suffering. And we're gonna get into all of that, like I said. This video, it's not to scare you. This video is to make you aware, make you aware of what's all out there, what's surrounding, what's yet to come. So, Pretty much my story goes, I, 4th of July came and I ended up going, you guys saw, I posted videos, pictures, hung out with my brother. Well, my new guy friend, his brother took a trip to Orlando. So he brought the COVID back with him. We weren't aware, none of us were, not even him. He had ended up going into the hospital on 4th of July. I said, okay, this is serious. We need to go get tested. So I went and got tested on Tuesday, Tuesday of two weeks ago. Tuesday, today's Wednesday, right? So three weeks ago, I went and got tested right after 4th of July. Rapid testings, they don't work. It said I was negative. Who was I to think? So me and my guy friend, he came down we just kept on popping ibuprofen, taking our temperatures, just thinking we just had a flu. Because remember, my rapid testing said I was negative. So go about my day, go about my business. He ended up going home the next day, which was Tuesday. Oh, uh, I'm sorry, Wednesday. Sorry. Oh, uh, my throat sometimes. I should have brought apple juice in here. Wednesday, he ended up going home. Wednesday night, I woke up around 9.30 with a fever of 103. I immediately called the hospital and they told me to come on in. I went in and I said, listen, I was just tested for COVID. I said, literally, less than 24 hours ago. Like, well, we're gonna go ahead and test you. I had the shivers, I had the shakes. I wasn't feeling good and I know my body. I don't ever get sick. So, I kept on just sitting there waiting, waiting. It was like a forever waiting game. I was there for like two and a half hours in the waiting room, just waiting for answers. So they went and tested me and they tested me for strep, which was negative the day before as well, COVID, and this thing that attacks children. Um, I can't think of it right now, but TCS or TSS, something like this. So. When they finally brought me back into the emergency into the room where I got situated is when they told me the bad news. 
I had COVID. I said, wait, what? I literally just got tested. I said, yeah, those rapid tests aren't really that accurate. You need to come to the emergency room from now on. So thank God I did, or this could have been way worse. I just heard a story the other day when I was driving home from the hospital, the 30 year old woman, she was sick for a week. She didn't think nothing of it. She just thought maybe she was just sick. She went to the hospital and the next morning she was dead. The COVID attacks your immune system so quickly, especially if you don't get on what you need to get on. So my story still has not even started. So that was on Wednesday. I went back to the hospital on Thursday in my hometown. They sent me home. I went back to the hospital ambulance on Friday in my hometown. Well, I hate calling this my hometown because I'm from West Palm Beach, but where I live. In this hospital, it's horrible. You don't even want to take your dog to this hospital. That's how horrible Jackson County is. So they sent me home Saturday morning saying they needed to give up my bed for someone else that needed it more. Okay. I slept all Saturday, all Sunday. My mom came up to help me on Monday, but I didn't want her around me. I would never be able to forgive myself if I gave my mother this horrible, horrible disease. Is this what this is? A disease? I would never be a sickness. I would never been able to forgive myself. So I told her to stay with my brother. So it came down to it Tuesday. Tuesday, I just couldn't breathe anymore. I kept having fevers. The fevers just would not stop. They would not break. I had a fever every day, 102, 101, 103, 102. It just kept going up. Nothing was working. So finally Tuesday, I called 911. I called 911 and said I couldn't breathe and that I had COVID. The ambulance came and this amazing two men said, where would you like to go? I said, take me to Southeast. That's in Alabama. I live in Florida, but that's okay. Cause I needed to go to a hospital that I knew was gonna take me serious. So the ambulance drove me all the way to Southeast Alabama. They admitted me into the hospital. I was, well, first they put me into the hospital and they went and get, they did exams. They did CIT, CIT and pneumonia. Now I got tested for pneumonia in my hospital and they said all I just had was congestion, but I had pneumonia when they finally ran the proper testing. Like I said, this could have been so much worse. So I'm really glad that I ended up making that decision of going to the hospital. It pretty much saved my life. Well, <clears throat> now let's begin the story. After being admitted with them telling me that my blood pressure, my I'm sorry, not my blood pressure, my oxygen was not staying above level. You always want your oxygen to be 91 or higher, actually higher than 91. My oxygen kept dropping, depleting between 87. So that's immediately why they admitted me. Well, they also decided that they were gonna put me on the COVID cocktail. I'm not exactly sure what it's called. Um, it starts with an R, Robexin or something, Robixin, but I couldn't take it because it was giving me kidney failure. Luckily, my kidneys went back up to par, but I wasn't able to recover quickly like everybody else normally does because I couldn't take the COVID cocktail. So here I am Wednesday morning in this hospital all by myself and I can't even get up to use the bathroom by myself. It was the worst feeling in the world. It was the biggest fear. I couldn't believe going to the bathroom had become one of my biggest fears. It's the worst. You couldn't breathe. You couldn't even take a deep breath. My nose was all corroded. I had black stuff in my nose, old blood, dried blood, snot. It was horrible. I couldn't breathe. I literally thought I was going to die. I put it on my Facebook that I was going to give up. I didn't know what more to do. What you can't do is you can't give up. And that's what I almost did. Thank God by your prayers, your concerns, my friends, my family, my loved ones. Everybody was just like, Samantha, you're going to beat this. Samantha, you got this. I had to start believing it myself. I really didn't think that there was anything left in me. I was really about to just give up. I was so scared. 
This was the hardest thing I think I've ever gone through in my 34 years of my life. Right after the COVID, right after like summer hit, I was ready to just have a great summer. Not even thinking. Remember, I just went to Orlando and had a great time. Didn't use a mask, not once, except when I went into gas stations. That could have been me then. Now, I'm definitely aware of my surroundings. Wearing my mask, gloves possibly, constantly with my sanitizer, spraying with sanitizer. Just keep on staying, washing your hands. Be weary because it's out there, especially this Delta. I don't wanna scare you for the ones that had got the vaccine, but 30 lawmakers of Texas on Monday all were already vaccinated. They had already had their second shots and they all caught the Delta COVID on Monday after that board meeting. Just because you got the first vaccine doesn't mean it's gonna save you from this newest strand. And this newest strand is killing people 33% quicker than the other COVID. This one just attacks your immune system completely. It's like you don't even see it coming. So please be aware of your surroundings. Be weary of others. Stay six feet apart. Stay 10 feet. Me, I want to go back to Vortex. I want to go swimming. I want to continue my summer. I'm scared. I don't even want to be nowhere near anybody. I don't even want, I, I don't, I want to float and I want to see my friends and I want to enjoy my summer, but I'm so scared. I'm on oxygen for another two weeks. They were telling me it could take up to a month. I took a shower by myself yesterday. Well, my mother helped me yesterday. Today I took a shower by myself and I got dressed. You have to push yourself. The oxygen, it doesn't make me feel any belittle of a person. It doesn't make me feel any different. I'm able to breathe. I'm able to survive. Now, my next goal is getting Sweetie Prince better. My son caught COVID. I gave my son COVID. Luckily, he's already gone to the hospital and it's a mild case. So he doesn't have pneumonia. He doesn't have to wear oxygen. We have him on steroids and we're just trying to get him better. My immune system is low though. So we're still having to keep each other separate from each other. So that's my next goal. Get Sweetie Prince better. Guys, like I said, this video isn't to scare you. It's just to open your horizons, open your mind. There was so many people that I couldn't believe on Facebook that were just like, oh, we're never, this is never gonna, this is over, COVID's over. COVID is so far from over. It's like it's starting all over again. So just be mindful, wash your hands, Keep a distance, stay safe, be aware of your surroundings. I really have a lot to thank to the Southeast Hospital. Some of the nurses there, they were assholes, but the ones that really helped me through, you know who you are, especially my respiratory therapist. Dan, you're the man, he was awesome. He's the one that helped me go to the bathroom by myself. That was my ultimate goal and I succeeded. I said I didn't want to leave the hospital until I knew I could use the bathroom by myself. Because let me tell you something guys, it was the worst because I would hyperventilate and then I couldn't catch my breath and then my oxygen would deplete all while I'm trying to use the bathroom. And it was my monthly. So that even made it even worse. So he just helped me, kept saying, take deep breaths. Think of vortex, think of the beach, think of where you wanna be that's your serene serenity. And then also, I just kept repeating to myself, I can do this, I can do this, I can do this, I can do this. If you would've looked at me and asked me that question on Wednesday or Thursday, I probably would've said no. I wouldn't be home right now, I wouldn't be in my sanctuary. I wouldn't be in my vlogging room. 
I don't know where I would be, but you can't give up hope. You can't just, just, you can't just give up. You gotta keep pushing forward. You gotta do it for your loved ones and for yourself. <sighs> like I said, so that was a whole week almost in the hospital. I left on that Monday. If I would have stayed one more day, I would have been in the hospital a whole week. So I made it. I'm continuing. I mean, I'm not back to full Samantha. I want to be, and I'm going to keep on trying until I can get back there. But for right now, this is all I got. And at least I got air in my lungs and a heart that's beating. Also, another thing, when you're in the hospital or if you're home, keep your legs moving because that can develop blood clots. You don't wanna develop blood clots. I didn't go to the bathroom for almost a whole week. That really messed up my stomach. I'm trying to get back to normalcy with that and then with the walking around and stuff. I lost a lot of bone definition, well, muscle definition in my legs and my thighs, which is fine. I'll gain it back. That's the least of my worries right now. All I know is I'm happy to be alive. I'm happy to know that there's days for me to come. I'm happy to know that my son will have his mom. I'm happy to know my mother will have her daughter. And I'm happy to know that I can continue to live. As far as packages, shipping, regular videos, those I'm working on this weekend, I promise. I wanna get your stuff out as soon as possible. I'm also terrified of going to the post office, but I will do it. If I have to double up on gloves and masks, I will have the stuff ready. Mama Sweet says she's gonna help me get all the packages going out this weekend. It's the only update I have for you guys. Like I said, please live life to your fullest and don't ever look back. As always, Stay beautiful. Stay blessed. I'm Samantha Sweets. I love y'all. Bye.